Welcome to Complexity Made Simple and my name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's uh, fantastic video newsletter what I'd like to talk to you about is all the materials that you can purchase to help to support the channel. We've got these fantastic textbooks that range from the simple statistical process control for small batch production. We've got the seven quality tools for world-class problem solving, which is essentially yellow belt material. Then we move on to design of experiments for 21st century engineers. Every engineer and scientist needs to be able to do design of experiments. And then finally, drink tea and read the paper. The most fantastic green belt handbook you can buy on the market today. Full of practical tips and fantastic physics that'll help you become a world-class engineer and a world-class quality engineer. Of course, you can also click on the link to buy me a coffee and make a donation. That would be fantastic. But at the very least, click on subscribe, click on like the video, because it all helps to support the channel. Many thanks for your help. And now on to today's video. Welcome to the latest video. And in this video newsletter, what we're going to talk about is the best quality measure for low volume manufacturers. Okay, so you're all looking for quality KPIs. You know, we love a key performance indicator, folks. Um, and this is not necessarily a KPI, but if you're on a process and you're trying to understand the process, but you're low volume. So what we're looking at here is quality KPIs for low volume situations. That's what we're looking at. And this, you know, my clients are typically in this area mostly now. All the volume manufacturer making t televisions, making any kind of electronic goods in high volumes, because all of that's shipped offshore as far as I'm concerned. So the people I tend to deal with are high quality, low volume. So one of my clients, they make what you might call big industrial medical equipment. The kind of equipment that's like, um, like an MRI scanner. Maybe the hospital has one of these units. They don't actually make MRI scanners, but it's a similar sort of scale of equipment. Very specialist, very expensive. And they only make 300 units a year. Okay, so that's the volume that we're talking about. So we've got 300 units. Now, of course, the best type of data that they could lay their hands on would, of course, be measurable data. So regardless of the volume, if your quality characteristic is measurable, you are measuring a dimension, volts, weight, that type of thing. We are measuring it on a scale. So when I say measurable, I mean something on a scale. If we are on a scale commonly known as continuous data, then that's the gold standard. But of course, sometimes what you've got is, especially with these big pieces of equipment, you have a functional test where really all you're going to do is to say whether it's a pass or whether it's a fail. So that's the second type of data that you're going to come across, which is pass fail. Now, if you don't already know, pass fail is terrible data especially if you're trying to problem solve, especially if you're trying to see the problem has disappeared. Now this especially is, is problematic when the volumes are low because pass-fail data wants a sample size of 1,000 to 3,000 to start to tell you the truth. So a good sample size here would be 1,000 to 3,000. So 300 units a year is problematic. 
Now let's just think of a scenario where let's say we make 300 units a year and we're, say, we're seeing 15 failures. Now what would that be? 15 failures, it's a 5% defect rate. It's a, it's a big defect rate, but it's only 15 events. Now if you plotted a traditional pass-fail graph, what would that graph look like? Well, it would look, of course, like this. This would be one year. We would have 300, 300 machines that we manufactured. And of course, and, and so they're making roughly, they're making roughly one a day, just a little bit over one a day. So these could be dates or they could be machines. But what would you see? Well, you'd see defects here, wouldn't you? One, two, three. And what the graph would probably look like is like this. Etc. And of course, there'd be 15 of those little ticks. Look at that graph. Now, I love run charts. I, you know, if I could get anybody to do anything inside a company, if you measure anything, you should plot a, you should plot a graph. Please never look at the numbers. Always look at a graph. But what's that graph telling you? Look at the damn thing. It's bloody awful. That's a terrible quality KPI because it's not telling you anything. You know, if you start to work on this problem and as you work on it, another defect appears, what does that graph make you think? Well, it makes you think, I am solved the problem. The problems come back. So when you're in low volume, You've got to get away from pass-fail graphs. And obviously, if you haven't got measurable data, which would be the preferable way to do it, you need a different style of graph, a different style of run chart. And here's what you do. You don't plot the events here, which is what we're doing. We had one defect, one defect, one defect. This is an events type of chart. What you're going to do is this. You're going to measure the gap. We say, how many units did we produce before the next defect? So let's say this is, this is four, this is eight, this is 12, this is four, this is five, this is three, this is 16. Okay, so let's say they're the numbers. Now what this graph is going to be is mean time to failure. Now the time could be created in two ways. You could genuinely use the date, so the number of days since the last failure, or if these units are serialized, you could count the units. Counting the units is probably the best method if it's easy to count the units. If it's not easy to count the units, count the date. Now, what will this graph do? Well, it'll do this. You're currently sitting here around mean time to failure of let's say around sort of four to six to seven units before that defect arrives. When you get a new one though, here's what will happen. Now this one's at 16. So this one suddenly is gonna be sitting up there. Now normally when you see a defect, is that a bad day at the office? Well, normally it is a bad day at the office. But you've been working on this process. You've been trying to improve this problem and make it go away. Now look at this data point. We've never seen a 16 day window between defects. You are making the defects rarer, but this graph really isn't going to show that. But this graph is. 
How about if the next one comes, and the next one comes over here, and it arrives at up here, 32 days. Now we're up there. Now, again, when you get a defect, normally you'd be thinking, oh no, my problem's not gone away. It's back. What's this graph telling you? You're making this event rarer. You are having an effect on the process. Mean time to failure in low volume situations is a critical, critical graph to use. And if you don't believe that this is a good thing to do, think about your health and safety data. Of course, what do you quote these days? You count days since the last accident. What are you measuring? You're measuring the gap. You're not counting the events because when the accident occurs, what will it be? Well, it'll just be one accident. It won't be four accidents today. We haven't killed four people today. We haven't chopped four fingers off today. It'll be, it'll be an individual event. And because it's such a rare event, in the health and safety statistic, you've changed from counting the events to measuring the gap. Measuring the gap is mean time to failure. And it is brilliant when the events go very rare, when the volume is very low, and it will tell you so much more about your process performance, whether it's getting better or getting worse, and it will tell you those things very, very quickly on a mean time to failure graph. This thing's going to take a real long time before it starts to empty out. You'd have to look at the graph over a long period of time. So if you're in the world of low volume, if your unit quantities are very low, if you have pass fail data, you really need to move away from pass fail data an events graph, and you need to plot a mean time to failure graph, get more information about your process performance, and of course, make more money.